<laughs> it's time to further delve into the realm of mad, unchecked science. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. <laughs> I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British Rail Critics, and of course, my Underwater Train Finders. You are the reason why this content remains! <laughs> and today, it's part five of five trains that are clearly just mad science experiments. The Victorian Railway Rail Tractors. The heck is th that's just there's th th what the Australia? What are you doing? These diesel mechanical locomotives. Oh boy, are yes still are. Um, an interesting uh decision by Victorian Railways. Basically, they were meant to move railway wagons at country stations or private sidings. They were meant for very, very, very light duties, and only for shunting. They are quite literally agricultural tractors, just regular old tractors, sitting on top of four-wheeled steel rail wagon frames. That's, that's all they are. They're very, very simple. Dirt simple. And the mechanical nature involves a chain drive. Yes, one of those again. They can only move a little less than 10 miles per hour, 15 kilometers per hour. And their power output ranges depending on modifications added to them, but uh, they uh, get to a rip-roaring 50 horsepower. Oh, yeah. But in their defense, uh, they worked. They still work. Like, they move. They can move small things around, and that's all they were for. The very first one was actually built in 1932, and more were actually added in the late 50s. Some are in preservation, and some are still actually in use. The reason is that, yeah, they're simple, and they're kind of a Frankenstein monster of a creation, but they do function. And what is it about Australia that makes them do that? Like, I talk about a lot of weird locomotives, but other countries, it's generally some kind of pushing the envelope, doing something crazy. But with Australia, any of their weirder experiments seem to involve just stuff they had just lying around. Like someone one day showed up to work and was like, Oi, hey mates, what we got around here? I want to make something new. And they just mishmash whatever they got sitting in the corner somewhere into something that actually kind of works. And in their defense, yeah, these rail tractors do function and they do their job. So I can't really knock them. Because, I mean, they worked. They did understand the assignment and continue to be very useful little abominations. The H-45, otherwise known as Prototype T-22571, which makes it sound like some kind of weird SCP abomination. Excellent, excellent. The H-45 was a 2102 locomotive, built in 1951. There is very little information about it, but I will give you what we know. It is actually a high-pressure steam locomotive with a Lamont boiler, which uses water tubes with pumped circulation. And it ran at a pressure of 750 pounds per square inch. It was also designed to run on pulverized brown coal, and it was meant for heavy freight trains, though it only ran twice. Both trial runs ended in some dangerous malfunctions. The first test resulted in the condenser being empty. There was no water in it, which is very bad. Just so very bad. And the second one had similar issues, but allegedly the steam pipes got so hot that they started warping and bending, which is horrifying. These problems were considered too bad to even attempt to overcome them, and the project itself was already very expensive. It sat around for a while, and then was finally scrapped in 1961. But not all of it. Some parts were kept around, 
and are actually still running. Her outside cylinders, trailing wheels, and the rear part of her frame were used by the GDR to convert the streamlined tank locomotive 61002 into a Pacific type 18201. That locomotive does still exist. It is often considered the fastest operating steam locomotive in the world in the present day. Although I'm sure the comments are going to heavily debate that logic, but still the point is, at least some parts of this bizarre creation are still around. The NWR Class TG 060 plus 060 duplex steam locomotive. The heck is the- what did you- And when I say NWR, Northwestern Railway, but Indian Railways, just so we're clear. Now, in the technical sense, these locomotives are actually independent, but they were designed specifically to work in pairs. They were supposed to have this weird shared tender setup, and the idea was that two locomotives are better than one, and having them constantly linked would give them more power. They were supposed to operate heavier trains on very steep gradients, but the problem was they just didn't actually work that well in this format. It just wasn't a good idea. It didn't work. And looking at it, my whole thing is this. Okay, I understand what your logic here is, but have you considered just double heading the trains? Like, why share a tender? That just limits their range for no reason. And one has to always run backwards which I guess isn't a big deal, but it's still weird. Perhaps the logic is that one crew could handle both of them? I'm not sure, because there isn't that much information about these things. What we do know is that they didn't work, and that it's not really clear what happened to them after that, though it is believed that they were simply used as single standalone steam engines, you know, like normal people do, and eventually they were scrapped. The V19.1001. This somewhat advanced locomotive is a V8 locomotive because it has four separate V2 engines. That already sounds bizarre. Is it a diesel? No, it's a steam engine. It used steam motors. Four of them were attached, one to each of the axles, as this was a 2A2 Mikado. The concept originates from Frederick Witt, who was the head of testing and development for the Deutsche Reichsbahn. It was first discussed at DR in 1933, and plans were drawn up in 1935. The locomotive was delivered right in the middle of World War II in July of 1941, but testing actually went pretty well. The concept was considered quite advanced, and it was a way for steam locomotives to directly power their axles. As opposed to having side rods crank them all at once, the motors can do it separately, and this has some advantages. It actually made them a lot more like diesel electrics in this regard. Though, given it was World War II, by October 1944, the locomotive was seriously damaged during an air raid on Hamburg. Then she was moved to the RAW Braunschweig and stayed there until the war finally ended. And in August of 1945, she was repaired, and after one test run, was actually shipped back to the USA. American forces had discovered her and the bizarre technology and were intrigued. She was sent to Fort Monroe in Virginia for both inspection and testing, but it was decided the technology wasn't worth duplicating because the industry was already moving towards diesels anyway. She was certainly an interesting design and she did work, but there didn't seem a lot of point in her, at least as far as the Americans were concerned. She was moved to Fort Eustis in 1950 and finally scrapped there in 1952, never being returned to her native Germany. The Soschenguv Automotive SOS. This is a fun one, and I actually applaud this particular mad science experiment due to who was responsible for constructing her and their reasons. This story takes us to South Africa, where trains are the cheapest form of transportation around, and many people rely on them. But South Africa's been going through a bit of an issue involving power cuts, as well as wire theft. People are stealing overhead wires, which is a very dangerous thing to do, by the way, do not actually do that, and selling the copper for a profit. 
It's been a consistent problem for South Africa, and they're still kind of working out a solution. But to solve this issue, a group of 20 South African teenagers, these kids are in high school, I want to stress that, actually built a solar-powered rail car. The simple design has a roof that's covered in photovoltaic panels. It took the kids, as well as their supervisor, two years to complete the prototype, since they didn't have that much money to work with, but they managed to accomplish their goal. The rail car does indeed work, and their intent here was twofold. For one thing, electric trains are pretty common in South Africa, but with the cable theft that's making it a lot harder for them to function, the rationing of electricity due to the shortage is also making that more difficult. But a solar-powered train would effectively defeat both problems, since the car can produce its own power itself. The car is designed with controls at one end, and a flat-screen TV on the other end to entertain passengers, so they even took comfort in mind. Apparently, sitting inside, it's actually pretty spacious, despite it looking, well, a little slapped together. But, I mean, these are teenagers, so of course it does. The train is capable of 30 kilometers per hour, which is a bit better than I expected, though it's still not very fast. But that's not entirely surprising. She was probably displayed at the 2022 edition of the university's innovation event. Their supervisor, Kigabotso Mayamane, actually gave full praise to the students, for having both the desire and the ability to figure out how to build such an ambitious project. Now the real question is, will this prototype really amount to anything in the long term? Well, if you ask me, I do think that eventually, technology should progress to the point that we are getting most of our energy from the sun. The problem I have with it, at least as it stands, is that current solar panels are not very efficient, and we need better ways of utilizing the sun's energy. That's always held back projects like this, because there's only so much energy you can take in and only so fast you can make something go. Solar-powered cars, for example, have never taken off because they're slow. And it seems like that seems to be an issue with this prototype as well, but I'm still optimistic because the attempt here is very pure. They wanted to help, and they put something together that actually does work. An actual production version of this sort of thing for South Africa probably is quite a number of years off, and in order to work at full capacity would require some technical innovations and discoveries, but I do think that might be something that could be possible in the future, and I applaud the kids responsible for this creative, if not a little crazy, experiment because, well, they did it. They put something together, they put their minds to it, worked on it for two years, and delivered a product that, well, moves. She moves. She's not just a concept, she is a real thing that you can ride on. So good for those bright minds over in South Africa. You kids are going places. And with that, a special thank you to all my underwater train finders, some do 267, Orange Glass, Benjamin Owens, Penzer Kitson, 131-232, Josh Johnson, Middle for Life Guy, Anzac A1, Arthur Roy, Tommy Rossini, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Joshua Long, Brian, Jack Carson's Zerro Videos, Hayden DeGro, Master of None, Lord Hoff 444, Alaric Jaspers, the Baxter, that guy with the beard, Mark Holding, Lock Kraken, Murder Drones Doll, a person 723, DN Trouble Typhoon, Ohio Trucker 1, Hendrick Motorsports Fan 5, Alfonso Lapuche, Royal Hunter 2860, I surfer 1405, Charles Kwiatkowski, Dr. Race 78, and Matthew Wolf. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.